Uh, welcome viewers. Uh, this is Susan Mwita, your health advisor uh, with the True Living Show coming via Sky Cable TV. Uh, we are continuing on our series of type 2 diabetes, although in between we'll still talk about type 1 and um, uh, gestational and also uh, pre-diabetes. But mostly what we're going to emphasize on most is what I've just told you, type 2 diabetes and a part of it because we'll talk more of bringing uh, the sugar down. Um, what, what did we talk about? What did we say about um, high blood sugar? High blood sugar, is, we call it hyperglycemia. So as you can see on my table here, I have the glucometer. The glucometer is the machine which, you know, you, you, you check your blood sugar and it gives you the number. So if you feel like your blood sugar is high, or if you have uh, like the doctor, your doctor has recommended that when you have those signs and symptoms of high blood sugar, which we had talked previously, um, you are supposed to check because most people who are diabetic, they, they know, they know when it's getting high or most of them, how they know about it, how they know about it is because sometimes they take food which has high sugar. When you take a glass full of sugar, like uh, previously we had talked of bringing the sugar up, some people because they are diabetic and when you are diabetic it's like your cells or you, you, you crave for sugary things, you crave for processed carbs. Your body loves those things which you are not supposed to take. So that's how you end up getting high blood sugar. So even if you don't feel like your sugar is high, you, you, already, are, you already know or you're guilty of taking cakes, you're, you're guilty of taking glucose, you're, you, you take food which is high in sugar. Like I have a friend of mine, sometimes she tells me, I, I took a whole bowl of uh, white rice and after two hours I usually feel like I want to sleep. You know, you, you, because of what you indulge with. So you, you obviously when you are diabetic and especially those people who have bad, bad diabetes, they know and that's how they go checking their blood sugar. And it's a good practice when you know that or you feel or you suspect or you guess you have high blood sugar, it's always good to check. So here is the machine to check the blood sugar. So this one is called glucometer. And then you, you insert, uh, you insert uh, this to, on it to check. And um, that's a whole packet of it. It's usually sold or you're given like this. You have a pen which where you know you put the needle. You put the needle, the needle comes like this, like this one. It's called lancets. You know, that's the needle. So you, you put it inside here. And then you have the strips. So the strip is this one because it's what enters there. And then, you know, you're supposed to clean. You're supposed to clean your finger. Maybe I can demonstrate on how you do it. You're supposed to clean your finger, you know, because most of the time you check your, you, you check your blood sugar on the tips of your finger. So you clean up like that one, you clean it nicely. You can do on all of them, you know, you can do on all of them and it's always good to rotate because if you keep on doing one, you'll damage it, you know. You, you can even, you get bruised. So you usually rotate on many of them. So you, you are supposed to clean nicely like that. And because this is alcohol, and those people who don't have, who don't have the alcohol pads, because this you can buy from your chemist or your pharmacy, those who don't have it, 
they have the the other alcohol you buy on the chemist the bottle one you can have a cotton ball and dip it on it and clean it and give it like a minute or you know to dry up and then you get the pen this is the one with the needle inside and then you prick it there and then you get uh, blood and you are supposed to to clean the first drop because it might be contaminated it's the first one then the second drop is when you press it and then you check on it you check on it and then it will read for you the number there and that the number you you know you know it's the one your sugar is and there are other types of you know you can be checked on different ways you can go to the hospital or to a clinic they can also draw blood straight the way the blood is drawn and check there is another one called uh, a1c it's usually done like on uh, like every six months and that will be the first one to determine whether you are diabetic or not but when you do it at home, if the numbers, even if you have never been diagnosed with diabetes and you suspect you might have, you can also check that one at home and see the numbers. If they are way off, then you can go consult your doctor and then they, they can do the other one and they can determine for you if you are diabetic or not or if you are pre-diabetic or not. So let's get back here. So previous episode, we were talking on how to bring your sugar up. Then this episode, we're gonna talk on how to bring your sugar down because high blood sugar, high blood sugar is not good. When you have high blood sugar, you get, you spoil your inner organs which some of the inner organs are the river, the kidney, the heart too, the brain too, many organs of your body. Uh, you know, we all know about inner organs. So that's why when the sugar is high, you have to bring it down to be on the normal range. There is no perfect number for, for blood sugar, but there is a normal range and we will repeat it again and again and say the normal range for blood sugar is for before you eat anything in the morning let's say you had your dinner last night and in between you know when you slept and you woke up you did not eat anything and then you check your sugar so it sh the range should be between you know 80 and 140. if it goes beyond 140 there is a problem there then if you eat food, then after two hours you check your sugar. Your sugar should range between 80 and 180. If it goes beyond that, um, there is a problem. You start getting high blood sugar. And then when it, it reaches 200 to 50, then you, 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 it's going up. When you hear somebody has a sugar of 300, 350, and then 500, Oh, that's a very high blood sugar. And this machine, um, for this one, I know it reads up to 600. So when, when the machine, when it's very high, it goes beyond 600. There are those machines, it goes to 500. This one goes to 600. If it's above 600, it will read high. So that high, we don't know it's at is as high as what number so when it's that high you have to do something you have to bring the that sugar down how you can do it if you are diabetic and you have insulin ordered by the doctors if you have a sliding scale or if you have insulin to bring it down then you have to bring it down and also you have to go see the doctor or you have to go to the hospital when already the machine is saying high because we don't know this high is up to one, uh, 1200 or it's 800 when it goes beyond 600 we can't tell 
so and you know you, you can get um uh you it can go so high that you get ketoacidosis uh that's another term used when the sugar is crazy or too high so you have to know what to do so the simplest simplest thing you can do first of all when your sugar is uh, very high or when it's above 250 300 so first of all don't drink anything with sugar at all drink a glass of water drink a glass of water and then you can use what you're supposed to use you can use whatever medications so let's get on to type 2 diabetes and we also gonna talk about type 1 so let's get here on uh, our chart here we see uh, there are different types of medications which you take uh, to help you you know to be lowered in your blood sugar uh, they are taken with they are, they are ordered by the doctor and you're given so um some of them is like uh type 2 diabetes so you 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 have the alpha glucoside inhibitors uh some of the names are precos and gilset and then we have uh by uh bigarnites you know those ones most of them we know uh, the the glucophage you know they are ordered by the doctor they are those people who they take it's ordered they take one in the morning and one in the evening depending on the milligram most of the glucophage they come into you know dosages of uh, 500 others 250 and then a thousand so your doctor can tell you take a uh, glucophage 500 milligram in the morning and another 500 in the evening or the doctor can say take a thousand milligram once a day or take a thousand in the morning you know it depends on what the doctor orders so that's another type of um medications which you know they are to help you bring your sugar down uh some people they might have them and yet maybe the doctor doesn't tell them to be checking sugar so those ones it means their diabetes can be managed that way. Maybe once in a while when they go to the doctor, he checks them, but maybe not on a daily basis. The other people, they have it, uh, and they are told, check your sugar once a day, you know. Then there are other medications, um, like uh, saphonellas, you know. Th there are many types of that you know there are different types they are like the grip side most people knows about that one uh, and then there are dpp4 inhibitors different drugs like uh, junivia you know the, the the doctor can order that and then there are others uh, they are taken maybe some most of them this one, glucagon like peptide, one receptor uh, agonist medications. Uh, most of them, they are, they are fairly new in the market. Although, like, uh, like True City, maybe it has been there, maybe like around five years. But most of them, Victoza or Zempic, you know, but some of, most of these ones, they are even medication, they are, they are, they are like insulin. They are in liquid form and you inject yourself once a week or twice a week. So they are also good. So it depends on what your doctor orders for you, how you do it. And then um, we'll talk more of uh, the insulin. So we, we, we'll, we'll just get these ones out and then I'll show you uh, the types of insulin that you take so 
uh, what I would like you to know is when you have type 1 diabetes, and as we had said before, type 1 diabetes is you are born with it. Your insulin does, uh, your pancreas does not produce any insulin. Uh, you are either born with it or you found it at a very young age. And that one, you don't use the medication which we just went talking about, the tablets, the hypoglycemic medications. So type 1 diabetes, you only manage it with insulin. But type 2, type 2 you can even manage it with the diet, with the medication we just talked about. And also if it gets worse, you know, depending on its stage, you also use the insulin like type, type 1. So, so the, the, the insulins, these ones which are here, I just talked to you about. So they can treat, they normally treat type 1. That's a, a must. Because type 1, there is nothing else. You, you cannot manage it with the pills. It's only the insulin. Because that way your pancreas is not producing any insulin at all. And then type 2, you can... You can have a combination of the pills or the medication we just talked about and then with this. So we'll just go on, I'll be telling you about. So most this medication, the insulin, we have short acting insulin. So we, uh, and it's, you know, like the regular insulin, which is made up of humulin and novlin. And then there is rapid acting insulin, which you know we all know about Aspalat, another name of it is Novolog and Humorog. And here I have uh, one, the Novolog, it mostly looks like that, uh, or with, the, with an orange label there. Um, and like this one, if I read for you, uh, the person who was prescribed this one, it says, seven units before breakfast and dinner also if any as check if you check your blood sugar and it's 400 give an additional seven units so this person usually takes seven units every morning with breakfast and dinner time but at those times they have to be checked their blood sugar if it's more than 400 then you add the seven units. So that's um, that's um, rapid acting insulin. And then we have uh, intermediate acting insulin, humulin, novlin N, and humulin N. Then we also have other medications, which you know they are long acting insulin. Mostly those ones is either you take once a day or twice a day, every 12 hours or two, once in 24 hours. Uh, most of them, they are called Treciba. You have seen most commercials nowadays with them. We have Revemia, we have Lantas, we have Torgel. And I have an example of uh, Lantas here. So this is Lantas. And how you do it, how you do it, you just open it. So let's say you are told to take 10 units. You, you take, it's, it's a pen. It's very safe to use. Even the needle you use. So you use this one. Um, so you take a needle. It's already pre-made. It's a needle. So you open it. This is a small needle which, you know, you do sub cutaneous that's where you inject it so you you first of all because you might have used it yesterday or a different day and you don't want any infection so you usually clean it up with an alcohol pad like that then you open up and then pull it up like that and then set the numbers it's easy 
but previously as i had told you most of the people when they are diabetic especially when you're type one and you know some people they don't see well most of the patients don't see well because this disease has messed up their eyes have messed up their skin so when you're diabetic if you have a family member who is diabetic show them or make sure that the number they were told is let's say they were told 18 units they put exactly 18 units you can even prefill for them and then they will inject themselves with it so other insulins, there's combinations of, you know, long-acting and short-acting. They're here, Novlog Mix, 730. So there are all these. Then there's Humorog Mix, 75, stroke 25, insulin, Risperol. It's a mixture of short-acting and long-acting. And they are all, you know, to treat type, type 1. And they also treat type 2 diabetes. And as I had shown you one of this, the Novlog one, you know, uh, this one. So you use with a needle here. I'll show you the needle you use with. You know, you can prepare a needle. So let's say you are getting like 15 units. You get onto here. Then you open it because it's the first time I open it, I, I don't have to clean with alcohol because it's already clean. So I'll just get the needle like that, open it, open here, and let's say it's 10 units, you put air, and then you go there and inject, put the air inside and come out with 10 units. You have to make sure it's exactly 10, as it's ordered or the way your diabetes doctor said then you can inject it you can inject it to a person you know the way they say it so that you know the sugar can go down so and you have to dispose the insulin uh, you have to dispose them well uh, or the next episode you know, we will. I'll show you how to do an injection, where it is done, and how to dispose. You know the items here. And for now, this is Susan Muita with True Living Show. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, press um, likes button, and then you can comment there or help us do it better. And uh, don't forget to watch uh, this show uh, on Sky Cable TV uh, every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern African time and 12 noon uh, Eastern time. Thank you so much and goodbye.